Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Priests and Preachers Entering Islam by Yusuf S. Soul. By the way, this uh, video is going to be in four parts, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. They asked me to give a talk. Now, tonight's the night. Allah, You've been very patient. I want to tell you a story. The story of how priests and preachers enter Islam. It happened something like this. My father and I had a business in a mall some years ago. One day dad came to the house, he had a big house in the country, and he said, you know son, something amazing. We're going to be doing with a business with a man from Egypt. I said, well that's great. Egypt, that's the land of the pyramids, the Nile River, Cleopatra, all that good stuff. This is exciting, yep. So I said, well, when are we going to meet this guy? He said, yeah, we're going to set it up and we're going to have... Uh, you know, a chance to get with him coming up and, oh, and he's a Muslim. I said, a what? A Muslim? No, Dad, those guys, we don't do business with these people. You know, no way. They're terrorists, hijackers, kidnappers, murderers. They don't believe in God. They worship a black box in the desert and they kiss the ground five times a day. We don't need anything to do with no Muslims. My dad said, I want you to meet him. I said, no. He said, yes. I said, I don't want to meet him. He said, you will meet this man. So, well, I can't argue with that. So, all right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I do it on my terms. Here's what I want to do. I want to come to him on Sunday after church with my Bible and my born-again wife who will be all prayed up. I'll have on my cross and my cap that says, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and that's what we did. We went to church, heard a big sermon, heard somebody get the Holy Ghost and somebody else translated what they were saying. I don't know if you know what that means. That means somebody is speaking in tongues. They don't know what they're saying. Blah, 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 blah. And then somebody else translates it for them. And that really happened just like that. And then after that, we said, boy, we're charged up. Let's go get this Muslim. We went into the store where my father's place was. And I was ready for this guy. And I expected to see, you know, one of those guys with a big, you know, coat on to the floor and a big, you know, turban on and a long beard and a... <laughs> yeah, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> and a sword. I was expecting like Ayatollah Khomeini or something, you know. Eyebrows that start here and go all the way across, you know, really. <laughs> then my dad said, here he is. I said, where? He said, here. So this guy, this guy's wearing normal clothes, you know, and he doesn't have a beard. He didn't have any hair at all. He was bald-headed. <laughs> so this is what a Muslim looks like? He said, yeah. Okay. Shook hands with him. I was surprised. It was warm. He was human, you know. I could feel warmth in that. Okay. So I'll be nice. Hello, how are you? My name is Gav. What's your name? My name is Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad, very nice to meet you. Uh, by the way, you believe in God? He said, yes. Yeah, but do you believe in the God of Abraham? He said, yeah. Because, see, I had been studying up. I know something about these Muslims. What about Moses? Do you believe in Moses? He said, yeah. Mm hmm. How about David and Solomon? He said, yeah. But do you believe in the Bible? Do you believe in the Old Testament? He said, yeah. How about the New Testament? He said, yeah. I said, wait a minute. Do you believe in Jesus? He said, yeah. No, I'm telling you, do you believe Jesus is a miracle birth? Yeah. 
But you don't believe him as the risen Jesus. He said, yeah, he's, he's with God. I said, yeah. wait a minute. This is going to be easy. This is going to be so easy, yes. So I told my dad, let's do business with this guy. We can convert him, no problem. My dad said, leave him alone. I said, no, uh, 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 you know. We started doing business. We started traveling together, he and I. I began to observe his ways. I began to realize that he was a real decent person, a nice person, a fair person. In fact, we would have discussions and I would purposely try to sneak things around in the talk. But he would just be straight and say, okay, whatever, and let it go. I said, hmm, this is going to be easy. At one point, a friend of mine that has a big cross, he has a huge wooden cross, and he carries it down the street from time to time. He'll go down the freeway, he'll go across the country just so people see him walking along with this big huge cross. They'll stop and say, what is this? And then he'll start to preach to them, because he's a preacher too, you know. He'd give them these little miniature Bibles with just a few verses in it. <coughs> Especially has the verse John 3.16, for God so loved the world, etc., etc. And this man with the cross, I told him, you know, I've found a Muslim. He said, stop right there. Stay away from those guys. They're very dangerous. I said, yeah, but I think we can get him, you know. I have some ideas about this. He said, well, just take it easy. He said, you know, they don't really believe in anything. They're infidels. Okay. Then he had a heart attack and went to the hospital. When I went to visit him in the hospital, I met another man there. This man was a priest, a Catholic priest. And we became friends. When the Catholic priest was released from the hospital, we asked him to come and stay with us. And on the drive out to the country to my dad's house, the priest told me that he knew about Islam quite a bit because he told me Catholic priests have to study all religions, especially they have to study Islam. I said, I didn't know that. He said, yes, we have to know about Islam. He said, these guys, they know about the Bible. They know about the New Testament. They know about the Psalms and they know about Jesus and they know a lot about our religion and their religion and their Quran. I said, really? He said, yeah, take it easy. So, okay. I said, well, they, they don't really believe, right, do they? He said, you'd be surprised. He said, they really do have a lot going for them. I said, oh, okay. Now I've been warned about these guys. So I started again, trying to give the invitation to this gentleman to jump into our religion. Guess what he said? He said, well, I'll go to your religion if your religion is better than my religion. I said, this is great. Fill up the bathtub, we'll dunk him tonight, make him a Bible. Here. Good to go. <coughs> but then he threw something at me I wasn't ready for. He said, but you're going to need proof. I said, proof? Religion's not about proof. Religion is about faith. He said, in, is in Islam, we have both. We have proof. And we have faith, both. I said, okay. Are you trying to tell me you can prove there's a God? He said, yes. I said, no, I don't think so. Now look at this. A preacher arguing with somebody who wants to prove there's a God saying, no, there isn't. Isn't proof, that is. And he's saying, yes, there is. Now I decided what we need to do is to gang up on him because I wasn't a match for this guy. You know, you know just one-on-one, -on -one, I need help. My dad's an ordained minister. He read the whole Bible by the time he was 10 years old. He had a certificate for that. My wife was very conversant in the Bible. She had her own Bible. And I felt like the best thing to do gang up on him. So after the meal at night, clear off the table and I'm going to bring my Bible. 
Dad brought his Bible. My wife has her Bible. Catholic priest, he's ready to go with his. And we're really going to give it to this man. But it didn't work like that because my dad has the Masonic Bible, which is King James Version. But I had the Revised Standard Version, which is different, doesn't have all the verses that he has. My wife has Jimmy Swaggart's Bible, the good news for a modern man, and that's another version with weird stuff in it. The Catholic priest has the Bible with 73 books, and our books only have 66 books, and we're arguing with each other, uh-uh, yes, no, not that, this, that, the other, and all the rest of it. We had a problem. How are we going to justify what verses we're talking about when we can't even agree with ourselves? How are we going to convince this man about the Bible? How? Finally, it became obvious we weren't going to ever agree on anything. So I turned to the Muslim and I said, by the way, how many versions of that book of your Koran do you have? Oh, there must be a lot of those too, right? He said, there's only one. A one. And it's in Arabic. And if it's not in Arabic, then it's not the Quran, because Quran is recitation. Recitation. It's what you recite. And he recited some things for us, and I was amazed. He knew it in the original language. I had not seen anything like this before. A lot of people who look at Islam realize how powerful it is to have the original in Arabic language. They don't realize that. Because when you compare to other religions, they don't have their original books anymore. They have copies, translations, pieces of this and that, people's opinions books written about it. For instance, if a person wrote a book today about the Quran. I'm already loving this. I know I'd love this from the uh, get-go. I'm just wondering, would it have been any different if uh, the Bible only had one version? What would have happened? Would uh, Islam and Christianity still clash to some extent because of the different gods they may believe in? What's also interesting is the, the point that he points out that all the Christians in this situation all had different Bibles, all Bibles that were saying different things. I just wish there was like one message for everything. Yes, it can be the same re uh, written in different ways or rephrased, but then sometimes the meaning gets confused. That's why you find yourselves arguing because your Bible says this and the other one says something else and you understand those uh, maybe same chapters and verses but different meaning to everything. Let me know what you guys actually think so far. Um, if there's something that you guys want me to react to, drop the link in the comment section below and I'll be more than glad to react to it and yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.